Along the crossroads of East and West, and amongst the mightiest of cultures, the island of Cyprus has continued since the dawn of civilization to prosper and create. Cypriots cultivated the land, carved and chiseled rocks, stones, marble, extracted, smelted, and gave forms of art to precious copper, to gold and silver. They accepted and absorbed valuable exchanges and transactions brought to them by sea from countries near and far. The island continued to create relentlessly and create bridges and links between great civilizations. Cyprus culture has existed for millennia and has left indelible footprints deeply engraved on the world's cultural map. The island civilization was studied and assessed by the world's best scientists and has rightfully earned its position as the core of Mediterranean culture, the cradle of world civilization. Culture is a fundamental human right a safeguard of human existence and the necessary connection with the past so as to ensure the correct route to the future. It is an expression of society and an essential tool of education. Culture is one of the most precious human rights it expresses and praises mankind and its deeds and is found deeply rooted everywhere within the soil, on stone or rock, on clay, canvas or paper. Culture is and always will be one of the most important dimensions of human life. Whenever there is a war, it's actually women's bodies that are attacked and the, the body of a woman is the battlefield. So that's the first target. The second one is the cultural heritage. The libraries, the churches, the holy places. And the third part is the name. To change the names is to change the identity, basically. So this is taking place everywhere in the world where there is a, a conflict or a war. The, Cyprus is not an exception. But today, to see this devastation and the dismantling of the old churches and the old European history is to me shocking. It's so upsetting and it's, it's, my heart is full of sorrow. I, could, I had to leave a few moments ago. I couldn't see this. It breaks my heart to see that places that people have considered holy are dismantled and vandalized it in such an awful way. I mean, it doesn't matter what we do today if the solution of the conflict isn't solved first. We have, though, um, international law on our side. There is a very important uh, international treaty called the Hague Convention, which is a, uh, was issued in 1954. You know, and it today has about uh, 115, 120 member states. I was in the UNESCO board for many years. And of course we could, we could address the problems, we could restore some of the buildings, but if people are still using them over again as, as barns for their animals, as storage places, if people are vandalizing them, we need protection, first of all. In the case of uh, northern part of uh, uh, Cyprus, as you know, we have very difficulty in, in intervening directly because the UN cannot. So we can only appeal to uh, Turkey and, and whatever entities <laughs> is there you know, to respect because these are things that uh, you know, they, they belong to uh, international uh, civil, civil, civil <laughs> society. I mean, they have to uh, respect it. For over 37 years now, since the Turkish army invaded the territories of the Republic of Cyprus in 1974, Cypriots are deprived of their fundamental right to their culture and civilization. 
since then, Cypriot culture has suffered a huge blow. Looting and destruction of Christian monuments, illegal exportation of works of art, illegal excavations within sites belonging to the Department of Antiquities of the Republic. Added to all these insults against world civilization is the illegal demographic alteration. More than 1,600,000 settlers have been brought over from Turkey since 1974, altering in this manner the demographic character of the island. Since 1974, numerous mosques have been built in the occupied part of Cyprus altering in this way not only the character, but also the history of this island. <laughs> Greek Cypriots need to show passports in their own country when they want to visit their villages, homes and neighbourhoods pay entrance fees to visit sites, monuments, and churches that belong to them. The original Greek names of the villages of Cyprus are printed on maps dating to the Middle Ages. They are to be found in Portland charts and the Solaria. And yet, Turkish names were given to villages, to roads, to place names, to monuments. Cypriot traditions, cultural richness, all perish under the boots of the Turkish soldiers. World famous archaeological sites like Engomi, Salamis, Soli and Vuni, temples, theatres, palaces and entire cities, a living proof of our ancestors' presence and creation are today under Turkish military occupation with irreversible consequences, both for their existence and their physical survival. Museums were looted, private collections sold abroad, International conventions govern archaeological excavations carried out in areas under military occupation. However, these conventions are repeatedly violated and illegal excavations continue to take place in areas that within the exclusive competence and jurisdiction of the legal state, such as Salamis, Engomi, and Solly. Findings illegally exported, disrupting in this manner the continuity of our civilization. And all this is done without any conviction or any serious consequences for Turkey. Precious samples of Cypriot culture were found in Western markets and the US. Treasures of Cypriot antiquity, priceless Byzantine icons and mosaics, manuscripts, paintings, books, all sold, while the entire civilized world watched with indifference the huge theft and fraud that was and still is being carried out against a culture and a civilization. The 575 Christian monasteries, churches and chapels are held hostage by the Turkish army that continues to occupy the northern part of Cyprus. Churches belonging to the Orthodox, the Catholic, the Anglicans, the Maronites, the Armenians, places of Christian prayer and worship, most in terrible condition. Some turn to warehouses or junkyards or restaurants. All unprotected, uncared, 
empty of the valuable and cherished contents, all left wide open to the northerly winds and rain. regime allows the Greek Cypriot displaced people to perform the divine liturgy to a very limited number of churches in their native towns and only once or twice a year. Even in these rare occasions the occupation regime imposes arbitrary restrictions. People are not allowed to pray in their churches people cannot exercise this basic human right. Since 1974, 19 churches and chapels dating from the 15th to the 19th centuries have been completely destroyed, eradicated from the cultural map. 100 churches are in a terrible state and are in imminent danger of collapsing. 85 churches were turned into mosques. And yet, the government of Cyprus has restored a very important holy place for the Muslims, Hala Sultan Tege whereas it takes particular care and restores Ottoman monuments and places of worship. A Gothic church in Nicosia, St. Mary of the Augustines, that was transformed to a mosque in 1570 and belongs to the Antiquities Department of the Republic of Cyprus, was offered to the Muslim population in Nicosia for their religious needs. For over 37 years, the legitimate government of the Republic of Cyprus calls for help and sympathy from the civilized world to save all these monuments. These monuments do not belong only to the Cypriots. They belong to the global community. See, for us, heritage is not political. Because for us, of course, you know, heritage is an expression of culture, an expression of human society, human history, and so on. So we, we, for us, it's normal to see heritage as a common. In the 21st century, the rich, ancient civilization of Cyprus, a member state of the European Union, is threatened by the continuing illegal military occupation of over a third of its territory by Turkey. Rescuing these monuments should be the duty of all. <laughs>